pretty, aren't they? But who's guiding it? Who is controlling it? Who is the head of this organization? The answer is no one. It is an emergent phenomenon. The individuals do more or less what they want, but the collective pattern of behavior is determined by the semi-generic action of the individuals. This is anonymous. It is an expression of the collective through the media of the internet. Try living a day without your mobile phone, electricity, agriculturally produced food, or the internet, and you'll realize how intimately our civilization and our lives are defined by technology. New technology changes the way we live. I mean, look at the car, for instance. So it was with the internet. At the birth of the internet, the only people who could understand it were nerds and hackers, and thus these were the first people to explore the possibility of collective action through this new media. They were the founders of Anonymous. However, technology has progressed that virtually everyone can understand and use this new worldwide communication media. The baby has grown into a giant. Anonymous is no longer the expression of a bunch of tech-savvy nerds. It is the voice of our collective values. To date, the largest emergent phenomena on the planet has been countries. Now, arguably, it is anonymous. There is no head, but the people express their opinions according to their personal values, and thus is the voice of the collective heard through the actions of the individuals. It is the ultimate in democracy. Bronze Age religions such as Christianity and Islam were fairly primitive in the psychological conditioning of their followers typically using unsophisticated techniques such as emotional blackmail and other plays on simple human emotions. Scientology is human manipulation as an art form. Scientology is the apex of immoral exploitation of human behavior. Scientology is a contrivance for abuse of people for profit. All other considerations are secondary to its primary self-centered function that serves no purpose for wider civilization. It is a cancer. Among the manipulations employed by Scientologists are Victims are encouraged to distance themselves from friends and family. This is of course separating and isolating the victim from any potential support structure that could make them aware that they are being conditioned by a cult. The victim is subject to auditing, a one-to-one -one affair for which the victim is perversely expected to pay for, sometimes involving large sums of money. The process involves a Scientologist asking a series of leading questions to make the subject feel they are a junior in an environment of authority, who they are repeatedly informed are only interested in their welfare. You know perfectly well what is the matter with you, Winston. You've known it for years, though you fought against the knowledge. You are mentally deranged. You suffer from a defective memory. You've never tried to cure yourself of it because you did not choose to. There was a small effort of will which you were not ready to make. The mindset that this brainwashing brings on can be best seen in the behavior of Scientologists. Dash Mark, how many crimes did you help carry up to, to uh, cover up today? How many crimes? Can you tell us how many you plotted to cover up today? You guys sit and figure out how to handle your crimes, your criminal organization? Huh? What are my crimes? What are you afraid of? Don't you have a team of What people? are you afraid of? Why are you afraid of Hubbard? Why are you afraid of Hubbard? Yeah, you know what? What? what is your problem? Why are you, you afraid of I'm not afraid of Hubbard. I, I'm vast. Yeah. I can, I can familiar with that term? You. I mean, I'm here. What are you afraid of? What am I afraid of? What? You answer my question. Well, there's plenty to be afraid of. Answer my question. But I'm here, aren't I? Well, what are you afraid of? Ans you haven't answered my question yet. What are you afraid of? I'm not afraid. I think Don't you, are, you, Mark. you You wouldn't be afraid if you weren't doing what you're doing, Mark. You're doing something. It's proof that you're afraid. You're afraid of the success of Scientology because people are going to find out your crimes. What are they, Mark? Spit what them out. Get Did you take time off from beating your wife to come down here? What do you got to hide? Well, excuse me, Dan, but... Uh, Murder, perhaps? Something in your closet there? Yeah, what would they be? Oh, I'm sure you're a child molester myself. Okay. all right. Yeah. Uh, he, he looks like it to me. I mean, that'd be my guess. You've got crimes, Mark. Get them off your chest. You know you got the crimes. You know you've done things. What is it? You tell us, Mark. What is it? What are your crimes? Criminal activities. What are your criminal activities, Mark? Because that's why you're here. You've got your own criminal activities you want to hide. Well, spit them out, Mark. That's all you're here for, to hide your own crimes. The technique is dogged and relentless, and conditions the victim to servitude. 
The information divulged is recorded by Scientologists and in documented cases has been used to intimidate individuals from leaving the cult or to preclude any would-be friends or family from providing help that would prevent indoctrination. Scientology is a hierarchical structure in which the initiates start off at an entry level and work up. The structure propounds to the victim that they are subservient in an authoritarian system, and to give the victim the illusion that they are achieving something, when really it's simply predating on the addictive and habit-forming behaviour of social advancement. Once the victim has been conditioned to servitude, they are bled for money for auditing, and paid a commission for indoctrinating others to Scientology. In this sense, Scientology is akin to a brainwashing pyramid scheme. Scientology is also ruthless in implementing the military doctrine of local superiority of numbers against critics and those who think of leaving the cult. This has been known through a fair game policy, where Scientologists were told that they were not subject to the rules of decency when interacting with anyone who was critical of Scientology. This usually takes the form of intimidation and ad hominem attacks. This constitutes attacking people, not the ideas that they put forward. Al Ron Hubbard wrote, anyone who attacks Scientology is a criminal. All you have to do is dig up their crimes to silence them. And if you can't dig up any crimes, manufacture them. In the academic arena, this is simply a non-starter. The concept is valid no matter where it originates. It doesn't matter that Newton was a creationist. This doesn't change the validity of Newtonian mechanics. It doesn't matter that Churchill was a drunk, he was still a pretty sharp bunny. It doesn't matter that Jefferson owned over a hundred slaves, this does not undermine his wording of the Declaration of Independence. This sort of behaviour violates virtually every aspect of human decency. It would be like showing up at a Truman White House press conference and repeatedly announcing, I want you all to know that you're talking to the only man in history to use nukes on defenceless cities. The mere fact that Hubbard himself was saying such things shows that either Hubbard was a moron, or he was simply saying this to endorse intimidation of his organisation to anyone critical of it. We all have things that we don't want paraded around in public, and indeed that others simply wouldn't want to know. This is called privacy. Scientology actively violates this common statute of human decency to achieve its self-centred goals. Following people around is a form of intimidation. It's an instinct from our evolutionary past that groups of people purposely following you around is bad news. Well, I thought I had plenty of great footage, so I was leaving. Well, then I turned around and saw that my three pals were following me. Boy, you guys are good. You know, I was about to leave. We're not stopping. Okay. It's nice of you to escort me. Dan, do you want to apologize for coming to picket me at my home? You think it was proper to set uh, leaflets around my neighborhood? For you to see the facility. The man in black is the Scientology cameraman. Uh, are you sure you're getting, getting good sound? Shall I hold that? From my perspective, you and you and the Church of Scientology have been spying on the BBC. You have been spying on our hotel. We didn't tell you where we were staying, so you've been spying on us. And I find that, if I may say so, a little bit creepy. Here's your microphone. The cult of Scientology has enjoyed some success through the ruthless implementation of these socially reprehensible instruments. Up to now, their ability to deploy local superiority of numbers has been key to their success. But now they are finished. Local superiority of numbers against an individual is worthless when you are up against a collective. The advent of the internet and the emergent behaviour of the giant of Anonymous has robbed them of the ability to perform the socially sick acts that allow the existence and propagation of Scientology. Times have changed. Technology has changed the landscape of the conflict and the rules of engagement. Scientology has lost the backbone of its intimidation techniques on the web. Here it cannot control the media. Here it cannot intimidate the collective. Sure it can pursue and attack the individual with malicious threatening behaviour, but this serves only to bind and anger the collective. Sure it can maintain its strategy of isolating individuals, brainwashing them, then bleeding them for money, but it will serve only to enrage the collective. We are anonymous. We are the collective voice of the decency of mankind expressed through the web. All Scientology has done is to awaken a slumbering giant 
and to fill it with a dreadful purpose.